those that are attending here uh, in presence um, in, in Berlamon, in Brussels, a uh, we, we very, very big, big room to be, to be able to host everybody. But we also have uh, several attendees uh, online as well. We have three very interesting hours ahead of us on extremely important topic. But to be able to keep with this, it's going to be my job, of course, to keep with the times. But I would say I will be quite strict, strict on the times that you have been uh, allowed to speak. So for those that are online, there will be a clock ticking so you can see your time and when you need to, to stop. For those here present in the room, I will you know, wave my hands when it's time to, uh, um, to stop. So please uh, respect... Uh, the time limits that we have uh, in solidarity to each other so that everybody can uh, have the floor that uh, is, uh, has asked for it. There will be interpretation in English, French, Czech, Spanish, German and Italian. And we will start with the opening remarks uh, from me and then I will invite the uh, Council Presidency, dear Vit Rakushan, uh, Minister and, of Interior and Vice Prime Minister of the Czech uh, Republic. So to start with, I would like to thank all of you that are now detecting, reporting and removing child sexual abuse material and preventing grooming. Some companies have been doing this for more than 10 years. Last year, you reported 85 million images and videos worldwide of very serious crimes, including rapes of very, very young children, even babies. People who view child sexual abuse often end up abusing children in the offline world. According to a Finnish survey, Almost 40% of people viewing child sexual abuse online sought direct contact with children afterwards. And when police investigate sharing of abuse, they also find real-world abuse. Recently, your reports triggered the arrest of 44 suspects in Poland. One of them was abusing two children aged two and five. Another was grooming a 10-year-old boy Police could, stop, could put a stop to that, thanks to the reporting. One of your reports triggered one of the biggest child sexual abuse investigations in Europe. The Bergisch Gladbach case in Germany, rescuing 65 children from abuse, identifying 400 abusers who boasted about their abuse in chats. They plotted online to rape the children, in swimming pools, on changing tables, and stream it live. Your report put stop to that. And that's why I thank you again. Your reports make real difference to protect children. But I also want to warn you, the clock is ticking to protect children. The European Union has the strongest privacy protection rules in the world. And I'm proud of that. But that also means that detection in online messages and chats is strictly forbidden unless there is a specific legislation allowing detection. And that detection must be limited in scope. At the moment, we have a temporary legislation that permits your detection of efforts providing a narrow exception of EU privacy rules to detect abuse. But this temporary legislation will expire in the summer of 2024. And unless my new permanent legislation is adopted, in less than two years' time, all of your efforts in the EU will be forbidden to detect child sexual abuse in online messages. That would be a disaster. If you consider that 80% of all of your reports originate in online messages, and one single image could be the vital clue that cracks a case. If my proposal is not adopted, police will be blindfolded, children will suffer in the dark, 
and Europe will become a safe haven for perpetrator, perpetrators. And that at all time when reports on grooming online doubled. Grooming that results in terrible crimes, like the murder of a young girl in Germany, Eileen, after her killer groomed her through a video game. And if my proposal is not adopted, that would also be a disaster for companies. Parents allow your children to play on your services because they trust you, because you detect grooming in chat, for example. But if you're no longer allowed to do that, parents will no longer let their children use your products. Already now, some of you are confronted with lawsuits because children have been groomed on your systems. I have prepared a new law so you can continue to prevent and fight child sexual abuse online. A new law fully in line with EU privacy rules. Any detection in electronic communication must be limited, proportionate and necessary, and based on specific legislation. My proposal starts with prevention, prevention, safety by design, and only if that doesn't work can you detect. But instead of broad voluntary detection, obligatory but limited detection, limited to a specific service, limited in time, limited by law, involving courts and data protection authorities. And with the heart of the process, there would be the new center to prevent and fight child sexual abuse. Some actors are spreading fears about my proposal. So I'm very glad that the conclusion of the Swiss Federal Council about our proposal, which clearly states our proposal does not provide for continuous causeless state surveillance of digital communications. And I'm glad that we have Michael O'Flaherty here today, Director of Fundamental Rights Agency, who supports our fight against child sexual abuse and the protection of fundamental rights. We must also protect the privacy of the children. I met recently a father. He lives in Germany. A neighbor abused his daughter, tied her down and raped her systematically when she was still a baby until she was three years old. Now this girl is a teenager, but the pictures are still online. The worst moment of her life consumed online again and again and again. My law will make it legally possible to continue to detect abuse and take it down. And it's good to know that it is also technically possible. Today we will hear more about that. On our agenda today is also the fight against terrorism and violent extremism content online. Completely different from the fight against child sexual abuse. Abusers want to remain hidden. Terrorists want the propaganda to be, to be seen. Our most powerful weapon in this fight is regulation. I urge member states to make full use of the terrorist content online regulation, fully applicable since June, and make full use of removal orders. The Digital Service Act also improves mechanisms to remove illegal content. Besides regulation, our cooperation here in the EU Internet Forum is essential. Provides practical tools to support companies, like the knowledge package of violent right-wing extremist groups, symbols and manifestos. Handbooks on borderline content and video gaming. The directory of contact points to tackle terrorist-operated websites. I have put these threats on our agenda today because we have to be one step ahead of the terrorists and violent extremists who are now exploring new ways to spread messages of hate, new ways to recruit, like video games and virtual reality. Under pressure for moderation from platforms, they are setting up their own terrorist-operated websites. They post content that is harmful but not illegal. And the and the face of online violent extremism and terrorism is changing. Incel extremists attacking women, far left and far right extremists uniting in hate, 
fight against COVID measures and now against Ukraine. And teenagers, usually boys, making pick and mix ideologies, radicalizing in different internet rabbit holes. A COVID rabbit hole, an insert rabbit hole. In October, a 19-year-old man shot and killed two men in a gay bar in Bratislava. He started, the perpetrator started to radicalize when he was only 12 years old. He posted a manifesto full of hate, a toxic cocktail of beliefs, anti-Semitic, anti-LGBTQI, but also anti-vax, anti-women, anti-democratic, a deadly do-it-yourself ideology, often with mental health issues added to the mix. Yesterday in Sweden, a man was convicted of the murder of Ingmarie Wieselgren, the national coordinator for psychiatric issues, a murder that shocked the country. She was stabbed to death uh, in front of many other people. The killer was a right-wing extremist with a hist history of mental health issues. Ingmarie worked for me when I was Minister for Health in Sweden, and we became friends. So that makes this personal. The fight against terrorism is personal for all of us, because all of the time, and because of all the time and effort and energy we are putting into this joint struggle, and because in the eyes of extremists and terrorists, all of us, all of society, are targets. As demonstrated once again by the extremists planning violent attacks against German democracy, arrested in a massive anti-terror operation by the German authorities this morning. It's personal, but as politicians, as business leaders, we have power. We have the power to protect people from terrorists, to protect children from child sexual abuse. So let's use that power to protect society, to protect people, to protect children. Thank you. And now I will leave the floor to Vit Ratkujan, the acting uh, presidency of the European, uh, uh, the, Council, the European Council now. Dear Ilva, Commissioner, all dear colleagues, before our presidency ends, uh, microphone please. At the very end of our presidency, at this meeting of the Internet Forum, I'm very happy to be representing the Czech Presidency in person, along with my Deputy Minister, Lukáš Kolařík. Uh, we consider the EU Internet Forum as a very important platform, and I would like to thank all those who participate in its actions, its activities. Uh, you deserve a big thank you, because through your activities, you, um, sorry, microphone again. In some cases, you are able to protect um, the children and all the topics that the Internet Forum uh, is dealing with are extremely important from the point of view of the Czech Presidency, the Czech Republic as such. And we would be very glad if the online dimension um, <clears throat> could continue to be a crucial uh, item on the agenda of the Council working bodies. Uh, under the Czech Presidency in the EU Council, we as the Czech Republic have organized several events focusing on online threats. The Czech Presidency uh, chose as one of its priorities in the home affairs uh, the higher efficiency of fight against sexual abuse of children. From the very beginning of our presidency, we uh, negotiated actively new uh, regulation proposals. And uh, just as uh, Mrs. Ilva Johansson, we uh, can see that there is time pressure on us and time is running out. And we do hope that in the subsequent presidencies uh, there will be 
a lot of attention paid to those uh, issues and that in uh, summer 2024 uh, there will be enough uh, measures against this type of violence because the children must never be defenseless against this type of violence. We cannot afford this. And uh, concerning the fight against terrorism and violent extremism, let me remind uh, you about the uh, meeting in Prague uh, on this topic and in November there was also an expert uh, meeting on uh, anti-Semitism in, in Brussels. Uh, unfortunately, recently we have witnessed uh, um, a consequence, specific consequence of radicalization online in Bratislava, close to the Czech border in Slovakia. In Bratislava, a peaceful city, there was a terrorist attack and uh, this act was preceded by a publication of an anti-Semitist manifesto on the internet. The manifesto was not only anti-Semitic, it was anti-system. This manifesto was anti-democratic. It was anti-human, so to speak. Unfortunately, uh, these days, this is uh, not an um, isolated uh, case. We can see a trend of radicalization online uh, and we don't have enough time to follow the activities of our teenage teenage children on the internet very often we are too uh, too busy to to follow what happens and unfortunately during the covid pandemic we often were not able to monitor how our children spend time on the internet and uh, who can influence them So online radicalization is a real problem with practical consequences on our lives and we have to do our utmost to prevent uh, this and uh, to monitor this type of violence and uh, fight against it in a timely manner. Another topical uh, issue is the spread of disinformation and war propaganda. Europe is at war, cyber war at least, and Ukraine is in a real war against Russian aggression. And uh, we are in a situation where we have to face war propaganda as never before, uh, very often in uh, the territory of the EU member states. There are all types of disinformation and we will all face a difficult dilemma. How can we fight this disinformation? Uh, how can we restrict personal freedom of expression? All these challenges are um, uh, very, very uh, strong in the online uh, sphere recently. Of course, this information does not have to be illegal, but it is by any means a destabilizing uh, element and a potential for radicalization. So let me call upon all of you, upon the EU internet former, to deal with this borderline content uh, also in the future, helping EU member states to come up with an approach that would not restrict the freedom of expression while also protecting our environment against war propaganda and other types of uh, risks. The Czech Republic will continue to deal with these threats and also in the future beyond the Czech presidency will participate in the EU Internet Forum both at ministerial and expert level. Let me wish a <clears throat> fruitful discussion to all of us. Unfortunately, I cannot participate uh, in the uh, all session because uh, I have other uh, appointments, but my Deputy Minister Lukáš Kolařík, uh, who is um, much more competent in IT matters than me, to be with you. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Vít, thank you for your intervention and also for your strong uh, engagement and support for the work of the in EU Internet Forum. So now we will turn out to go to our first topic on the agenda, 
on the, the preventing and combating of child sexual abuse and exploitation online. And we will have a specific focus on detection and reporting. I hope during this session that we can explore the role technology plays in detecting different forms of child sexual abuse and then look at the components needed for effective reporting of these crimes in order to safeguard victims from abuse and bring abusers to justice. We will start off the discussion with a presentation by David Rust-Smith, a staff data scientist working at Thorn, which is a non-profit organization dedicated to building tools that help to fight child sexual abuse. Uh, Mr. Rust-Smith will start us off with a presentation 